In this video, we're going to look at an important part of websites, which is forms. You've probably all used something like this, which you see here. If we go to the finished version and click on the contact us page, this is a form which is used to get the input from a user, such as gathering information to register or to send a message. The data entered is usually sent to a web server, and we'll look at this side of things later on in the course. For now though, we're just focusing on this HTML side, which is used to display the form on the screen. So let's get to work on the contact us page so we can begin to add our form. We already added a contact.html file just here. So we can begin to add our form to this. We can begin by adding our structure. So I'm going to begin by copying the content from the product detail.html. So I'll copy and then paste this in place of the text which we added here. You can of course type this out for more practice if you prefer, but I'm just going to paste this in to get things moving onto forms. To keep our website consistent, we can reuse the same header and sidebar. So this header can stay and all the side section can stay too. But I'm going to remove most of the main section apart from this heading. So let's go all the way down to the bottom of the table. And instead of product detail for the level two heading, I'm going to add a title of contact us. So now we have this main section clear to add a form. So let's give that a go and save that. If we go back over to the browser, inside of our project, let's try clicking on contact us. And now we're in this contact.html. So we still have the heading and also the sidebar, but no other main content. So within this main section, we can add our form. The form is contained inside of a form element. So let's add this in now. You will often see some attributes inside of this form opening tag, such as action, just like that, and also method. We'll come back to these later in the course as they are related to how we send our form data to the server. But I just wanted you to be aware of them if you come across them in any documentation. Action is used to set the location where the form is to be sent to. So we add a file path inside of there. And method defines which HTTP method we want to use to send the form. We can either send as a GET or a POST request, but more on this later. For now, I want to concentrate on getting some inputs on the screen. Inputs has a sound capture user inputs, such as text, which is entered, or a checkbox when the user clicks on it. Let's start with the text input for the user's name. So we can add a input element, just like that. There are lots of different types of inputs and we set them using the type attribute. So let's add the first one of text. Let's go up to our project and then refresh. So there's our contact us text at the bottom and a text input. This is just a simple box where we can enter any type of text we want to. In fact, we're not restricted to just text. We can even type in numbers and different characters too. We can add some text before or after it too to let the user know what to enter, such as the name. So let's do this now. Just before, I'm going to add the text of name, then reload, and there's our text on the screen as expected. If we take a look though at this finished version, we can see inside the text input, we have some faint text instructions. This is removed when the user clicks on the text box and we start to type. This text is added with the placeholder attribute. So let's go back over to our input. And just after the type attribute, we can add a placeholder. And then we can add our text into there of enter your name. 
and there's our text inside of there. Next, we want the user to enter their email address, which is just here. We do this in the same way, but this time the input has a type of email. Under a new line, we can add email and then add our input. This time with a type of email. This can also take the placeholder attribute to of enter your email. Give that a save and then refresh. And there's our two form elements side by side. The next input type is the text area. This is used when we want a larger box to type in more text for areas such as a message. So let's add this on a new line. So first of all, the text of message. And then this time, instead of the input, we use text area. This has opening and closing tags, unlike this input. So inside here, we can also add some extra attributes for this one too. We can set the initial number of columns wide we want the box to be. So let's add the calls attribute. And I'm going to set mine to be 30. Also, the number of rows to for the height. And I'm going to set my initial value to be 5. Text areas can often be dragged larger and smaller with a little drag section in the corner. Refresh the browser, and there's our larger text area, which we can add multiple lines of text in. As I mentioned before, we can also click on this section in the corner and make it larger or smaller. So remember earlier in the course we mentioned we can categorize most elements into inline or block level. We can clearly see that here that the form elements are inline. If we want them to be on their own line, stacked on top of each other, we can surround them in a div, which is a block level element. And this gives us the effect that we see on the final version here. So inside the form, let's add some div elements. Let's cut the name and paste that in. The second div for the email. And finally, a third one for the message. Paste that in. And then reload. And now all three inputs on their own separate line. This is a good start to our form and we'll continue in the next video.